I think doing a side hustle is always going to be difficult because you're going to be doing it alongside your main hustle. For me, it was really hard. I ended up having a crash, not to be all boohoo me, but I had a crash because I was working so much and I wanted to put in that time to kind of make it my hustle. I'm Lawrence, I'm from Essex um, and I'm an artist and I paint portraits of icons for icons and affluent people. I would probably describe myself as an entrepreneur um, and so that kind of encompasses everything to do with business around the art. So art and painting is what I'm selling as the product but I kind of focus a lot around the business side of things, the prints, the kind of sales, the marketing, the social media and I think that's kind of one of my main focuses rather than just the painting all the time. But I'm painting the people that I do who are successful people and stuff. You kind of realise that there are recurring themes no matter what the industry, no matter what they've done, consistency, hard work. There is a consistent theme in kind of getting to the top of your game sort of thing and I think that in turn is helping me get to where I want to be because I'm taking inspiration from that and trying to do that as much as possible. I usually start a little bit later, I'm not really an early riser but kind of by about 9.30, 10, I'm up and I'll get my first uh, session of painting in. I never really work kind of all day painting. I'll be doing like a little bit of social media stuff, a little bit of painting and kind of two hours is probably like the maximum that I'll ever be painting. But kind of just throughout the day, I'll be doing that, a little bit of lunch in there or whatnot. And then, yeah, I'll keep going basically through till like roughly like 12 o'clock at night or something like that. So start a little bit later, but try and get as much done as possible during the day. Social media is like everything. I think that if you can do social media well, then you're just opened up to a whole load of opportunities that you just would never have had the chance to. I gave up art a long, long time ago because at the time, Instagram, Facebook, and those types of platforms weren't around where a lot of people could see your work. And so you had no real hope unless you kind of went the old fashioned gallery route to be able to make it. But now you can get to a lot of thousands of people through good content. Steve Harvey says it best actually, he's one of the kind of people that I listen to quite a lot on podcasts and stuff, he says, your gift is the thing that you do the best with the least amount of effort. And so, I didn't, if I'd have known that, I'd have saved myself a lot of time because I tried to do a jeans company, I tried to go into a little bit of property, I tried to do social media marketing, but nothing was really hitting sort of thing. And I think that when you do find that thing, it will just kind of click and things will, it won't be like an overnight success, but things will feel a little bit different. It'll work for you, you know? I think that like a lot of artists, they feel like they've got to really feel the paintings and all that kind of stuff. And it's quite, it can be quite heady. It can be kind of like, what's the motive? What's the feeling and all that kind of stuff. Whereas I'm interested by the subjects that I paint. I'm interested about the person that I am painting. I paint them and it's simply a visual thing. Like you like the look of what I do. There's not more to it than that. Art is just the product that I'm selling. I know that by building like the personal brand and all that kind of stuff, like that is the value. When someone sells a print, it's a piece of paper. That's mental to me that someone will pay different prices for the same piece of paper. It just depends what's on it. But the value isn't on the paper. The value is in what people are buying into, which is the artist and what they stand for. Do you know what I mean? Music is a massive part of the art for me. It's like, the music almost goes hand in hand. I think when I put stuff out on my social media, I pay such close attention to kind of the vibe and like the kind of stuff I listen to is what I'll put the backing track to a video that I'll cut quickly and put it up on social media. I listen to music when I'm doing it. It gets you in the mood, in a weird way, it gets you in the mood and almost you feel like, or at least you feel like you're painting a better piece when you've got like a good tune on and you're feeling it. Do you know what I mean? I also listen to quite a lot of podcasts as well of usually the person I'm painting or, do you know what I mean, just inspirational people in itself, do you know what I mean? I think that's a good way to learn on the job almost. I think with my social media, I try and make it as interactive as possible with my audience. So, for example, the latest piece that I'm doing of Adele, I gave people four different options of paintings that I wanted to paint and I was happy to kind of paint any of them and Adele was the one that came out of top. Queen B, Beyonce, come a close second. Now with that paint, I'm thinking, hold up, how can I get my audience involved again to that thing? Because I think that interactivity is it's what it's all about, do you know what I mean? Getting the, 
the people that like my stuff involved. And so what I'm thinking of doing, which I don't think I've seen, but I'm gonna auction it on Instagram. And so what that basically means is that I'm gonna put, put, put the painting out there. It will have a minimum price, I don't know, like 250 quid or whatever you. And then from there, people will just be able to bid and it could go for 251 pounds or it could go for 10,000 pounds. But it's gonna be interesting to see what the market value of my audience on that platform is. It's scary though, because if it doesn't hit what I'd hoped, I'm gonna be fuming. <laughs> I saw this Wicked t-shirt the other day. It was like, creatives are the new um, athletes. And I do think there is a lot of truth in that. Obviously athletes are gonna be idolized by little kids and all that kind of stuff, but there is this like new wave. And that's why I think I'm hitting it just right is that art um, and kind of, yeah, the people in the creative space are the game changers. Your Virgil Abloh's, those types of people, even your Kanye West, obviously that's the most commercial example I can give, but like those types of people are changing the game. And I think that more and more people are beginning to see the value that those types of people offer. With reproduction of the art and with the merchandise side of things and kind of what I call the business aspect of the company, I'm willing to take a risk on something. It might not work, it might work sort of thing, but I'm willing to adapt and kind of put myself out of there. Take the L if it doesn't work, but also like it could be the win. And I'm willing to kind of take that chance because I do think there's a lot of opportunity around my personal brand to kind of leverage that into merchandise, whatever that be, whether that be cups, whether that be um, bottles, whether that be, I don't know, t-shirts or whatever that ends up being, I do think there's a big opportunity in there to kind of create a product, a high quality product that I stand for, you know, kind of, yeah, quality in itself that will hit and will be distributed amongst my audience. I want to be focusing on art. I want to be painting the pictures. I want to be uh, doing that creative side and stuff. And obviously I want to have a creative input in creating other merchandise, but having the distribution and the, the manufacture of all that kind of handled, that allows me to then be able to do other things. And if I know that that's going to be created at a certain quality, I know there's going to be consistency in the product. That is just a headache that I don't have to think about, which allows me to then do what I'm doing best and allows also merch or whoever it is to then go and be the best at what they're doing and go and do that. I'm having my eyes opened up to like the fact that you can produce a painting once, but then you can sell prints of it and there's no limit to that. Whereas a lot of people in their jobs, they sell their time for money. And so with a print, if I offer 100 prints, yeah, that's a limit to that, but I can make as many prints as I want to, do you know what I mean? And so as long as I've got the audience there to be able to sell to, then the kind of the sky's the limit, which is what I like. The kind of, the idea that you're not confined to a box and the possibilities, that, that's kind of what gives me that buzz. I can paint the painting, I can sell that. I can then do prints of the painting, I can sell that. If I've got a personal brand, I can then go and do talks and kind of leverage that in that respect. I can then do brand deals, say for example, like this hat that I'm wearing, do you know what I mean? And it's all the different like avenues of income sort of thing that you don't necessarily get if you're just in a job or whatnot. And that's kind of the exciting part of what I'm doing at the moment. And that's what I mean when I'm saying business. I mean all those types of facets, not just the painting. A really cool little merchandise thing, and, I've, and I do like when artists do that, is like a really cool like little figure, almost like little figurine or statue or something like that. So like Alec Monopoly, he's got the Monopoly man, and he, I don't know what exactly he does, but he gets a nice chrome finish on it, or um, Joseph Kilbanksy, he's so sick. He does like gold statues sort of thing. And so just like a little figurine or sort of thing, like a toy basically, but like a high quality toy would be like, it's just really cool. But because I paint, different faces of, of iconic people. I'm just not sure just yet as to what that statue would look like. My dream commission, I know he's a bit controversial, but it would actually be Kanye West. And I think that, yeah, if he still like flies over to America or whatever, do the commission and then sell it to him, that would be unreal. And I think that it would almost like full circle the journey because I did a painting of him for my first piece that I sold. And so it'd just be a nice way to like cap it off to now actually be painting for the man that I started it all off with. 
basically you've just got to work around the hours that you actually do have in the day when you're doing your obviously your normal job and stuff and that basically means be working late or getting up early and there's literally no other way around it because for a lot of people especially for those who are not even doing contract work where there are breaks and you do have a period of time to just go at it you don't have the luxury of just dropping everything and being able to focus solely on it so if you can at least build up some momentum and then when you feel like you're ready to kind of make that jump you're in a much better place than just kind of from a standing start off you go type thing